One of the common misconceptions I see people have about Linux is that it can't get viruses or that infections in a Linux environment are very rare. But if you stop to consider the constant news stream of companies suffering data breaches, more than likely one or more Linux systems were compromised to either gain access to sensitive data or make lateral movement throughout the organization's network. But the hacking threat that Linux servers on the internet might face is fairly different from the attacks that home users using Linux desktops might face. So is there any hacking danger on that front? The answer is absolutely yes. Never underestimate a user's ability to screw up their system, especially with the amount of control that Linux provides. So let's take a look at this bombshell that dropped in the Arch Linux AUR general mailing list just a few days ago. On the 16th of July, around 8 p.m., a malicious AUR package was uploaded to the AUR. Two other malicious packages were uploaded by the same user a few hours later. These packages were installing a script coming from the same GitHub repository that was identified as a remote access trojan, or RAT. The affected malicious packages are LibreWolf fix bin, Firefox patch bin, Zen browser patched bin. The Arch Linux team addressed the issue as soon as they became aware of the situation. As of today, 18th of July, at around 6 p.m., the offending packages have been deleted from the AUR. We strongly encourage users that have installed one of these packages to remove them from their system and to take the necessary measures in order to ensure they are not compromised. I'd also like to add that some more malicious packages were found, those being Minecraft Cracked, TTS, MS, Fonts All, V Desktop, Bin Patched, and TTF All, MS Fonts. Now, I should point out that the Arch user repository is, well, a repository of packages that are put together by Arch users. There's no real central authority that really vets any of these install scripts or binary packages. Of course, you can report them, and if sufficient evidence of malware is found, then the packages will be removed, which was the case with all seven of those compromised packages. But packages installed from the AUR should be done at your own risk. It's really not much different than Googling the name of some software that you want to install on Windows and then clicking on the first link you get and installing an EXE from there. Now, luckily, this particular malware campaign was not very sophisticated. The biggest thing that gave it away was probably the fact that they used a known malware payload without any major modifications. So most of the virus total scanners were able to identify the Chaos Rat Trojan that the hacker implanted in these packages. All packages were also created by the same user who had just created their AUR account quite recently and they tried to promote the malware in the Arch Linux subreddit claiming it fixed some problem that they were having but that user account also had very little activity with very low karma so it was fishy from the get-go. And the fact that the user was specifically targeting Arch users with such a low effort hack makes me think almost no one really actually fell for this. But as desktop Linux grows in popularity, these attacks are going to become more common and more sophisticated. Like remember what happened with the XZ library? I think more attacks are going to be closer to that side of the spectrum than the low effort that we saw here. And the only way to really combat this type of security threat is going to be user education in the desktop Linux space. In fact, it's even more important on desktop Linux because it's very rare for any antivirus programs to be installed there. I mean, if you use Windows, at least you have Microsoft Defender as sort of a last line of defense if you actually do download some malware and try to execute it on your system. Uh, so in a way, you could say that Linux is even more vulnerable because well, if you do end up executing malware in that environment, there's nothing to stop it other than manual user intervention. And this unvetted community software problem isn't just unique to Linux either. It also occurs in the repository of various programming languages like Python's pip, uh, crates.io and Rust and NPM and Node. There's several cases of hackers Typo squatting popular packages, for example, where they create a malicious package that's spelled just a little bit differently, maybe one character difference from a popular package, and people 
end up pulling down malicious code into their package by just typing in that pip command incorrectly and it infects their machine. And it also could infect the machines of everyone else who is unfortunate enough to run that person's code without realizing that they have brought in a malicious package into the project. And this is especially risky in the era of vibe coding because now you have to trust your AI to not pick one of those infected libraries whenever you're creating a template for a new project. And I know that a lot of people watching this know that I'm just stating the basics. Don't blindly trust software, verify its legitimacy, but there's a huge influx of people being exposed to software repositories in Linux or through the package ecosystem of whatever programming language they're using to cobble together some sort of automation tool with Claude or whatever the day's popular LLM is. And their whole prior experience to installing things on a computer is to just Google the name of a program, click the first link, download an EXE, and then rapidly click through the install wizard. And fortunately, most Linux distros are designed so that user repositories aren't something that's enabled by default. Okay, usually you just have the official repos, which is where you typically get your Linux software from, is supposed to have some degree of vetting done there. Hopefully one or more people actually looked at the source code of the packages and ran them in a controlled environment to see if they do anything fishy. And for the user repositories, you gotta kinda go out of your way to enable them, but there's varying degrees of difficulty with enabling them. Like for example, in Majaro, you can enable the AUR in PAMIC by clicking on preferences, entering your sudo password, and clicking this enable AUR support button, which is easier for a novice to do through the PAMIC GUI, which is pre-installed in Manjaro, by the way, versus on Vanilla Arch, where they would have to fiddle with the command line and manually install PAMIC or some other AUR helper in order to get access to any packages in the AUR. So just be aware of this as the popularity of Linux grows because so does the opportunity for hackers to push malicious packages into open source repos with varying degrees of sophistication, which is why the community needs to also grow along with the popularity of Linux in awareness and not just have more users of these programs, but also more eyes on the actual source code and especially on the build scripts that are coming from places like the AUR that have more lax package vetting than the default repositories usually do. And the same goes for Flathub, pip, and anyone telling you to curl a script and just pipe it into a shell. This is actually one of the pet peeves I have about Rust because it's like there's so much focus on security with this programming language because of its memory safety, but the recommended way to install it on Unix-like OSs is to literally pipe and install script into your shell, which is still convenient, I get it, and it's not really a security problem if you're copying the correct command from the correct website and they even make sure to use an encrypted connection for the curl command, but it still feels like a weird installation method given the context. Now, if you suspect one of your machines has been infected by this malware, you can check your running processes for one that's named systemd initd, which is the process name of the chaos rat. And if you discover the malware, you'll most likely need to reinstall Linux and restore from a backup before any of the malicious packages were installed. By the way, you can check what packages are installed on an Arch-based system by running pacman-q. And if you enjoyed this video, please like and share it to hack the algorithm. And check out my online store, based.win. 10% store-wide discount when you pay with Monero XMR at checkout. Have a great rest of your day.